Hi, this is David Harper of Bionic Turtle with a, an illustration primarily for my FRM candidate customers of Philip Jurian's Table 11.4 in the VAR mapping. So this looks pretty difficult. It's not as bad as it seems. And we're building really on the, a previous tutorial where what I showed you was the undiversified value at risk of a bond portfolio. Our bond portfolio, to keep it simple, consisted of only two bonds. And we previously computed the undiversified VAR. And now we improve on that by following Jorian and computing the diversified value at risk of the portfolio. What's the difference? The diversified VAR takes into account correlations and therefore gives credit for diversification benefit. If the correlations are not perfect, there should be some diversification benefit and the diversified VAR should be lower than the undiversified VAR. And so just to, this is table 11.4 from Jorian and as I said, not as bad as it looks, it's simply implementing this formula here for the portfolio value at risk. And certainly in coming weeks I'll have uh, more tutorials on this in particular. So this is value at risk and here we have alpha is a function of confidence. For example if we want a 95 percent VAR then alpha is 1.645. If we want a 99 percent VAR alpha is 2.33. So this scales this square root term here which is portfolio volatility. So as I've often said under this uh, parametric approach to VAR all we really have is a multiplier on volatility. Now this, ha this is matrix notation so instead of a single asset we're talking about a portfolio volatility. But, have that, but, but once we have that here in the square root we simply scale it as a function of confidence. And here inside the square root, we're taking the square root of the portfolio variance. That's what's inside the square root. And the portfolio variance inside the square root is a, a product of the exposures. That's the X. And this typically suggests dollar exposures. If it were a W, it would be weights. So we have a transposed column, a vector of exposures multiplied by sigma is the covariance matrix multiplied again by the exposures but this time it's a it's the uh, row vector or the transposed vector so the exposures enter twice but once they are transposed now this gets we're not using this here but rather an expansion of it which is equivalent and we're taking the square root here again of the vector here xv of individual vars multiplied by the correlation matrix multiplied by again the vector of individual vars but you can see here the individual vars are transposed so in our case it's a column vector and here is the row vector so this formula here is all we're implementing and just to show you in terms of the data we have we had five cash flows and we took the cash flows in our portfolio. We had two bonds. One was a one year, one's a five year. And then we have the present value of the cash flows. So our bonds in terms from a cash flow perspective is just a set of future cash flows that we then converted to present values of cash flows. Those are the small X's. So those are our exposures. Then we multiplied that by the individual by or V by the risk at each of these cash flow vertices and to get that is the individual value at risk at least of that cash flow so it does contain the volatility within it small x times v which is the risk and we have that product is the individual var xv and here it is right here and then we have the correlation matrix and we only need to input the triangles here but for example they're all pretty close to one here's the correlation between the second year cash flow and the first year cash flow so that correlation matrix is the R here and then we can start into the multiplication 
So if I just erase this part out, and again, just to remind you, all we're doing gonna all we're gonna do here is perform this matrix multiplication, which consists of vectors. And I'm starting here with the correlation matrix multiplied by the individual vars. See that term right here? I'm going to solve for that, and it's going to produce a column vector. So if I select, the, at least in Excel, if I select the whole vector, and then use a MMULT, which multiplies vectors, then I really am just going to select the correlation matrix, that's my R, comma, the individual vars, that's right here, close, parens, and then I'm going to hit control shift enter to indicate that I'm entering an array formula, and I get a column vector that is the product of the correlation matrix and the individual vars. So I've got that here, and now I've done that part already. Now I just need to pre-multiply that here by XV, those are the individual vars, but transposed. And those are right here. So see how we have the column vector of individual vars? And then I just transpose them into a row vector here. So same values, it's just flipped onto its side. And so I can do really the final multiplication here, which is to pre-multiply that row vector XV uh, asterisk, that's right here, times the column vector that we just did right here, R times X times V. So you can see that's the formula here, and that would give me everything inside the square root here. And if I just take it out, and I'll just prove it, M M U L multiplies, I want to multiply my column vector, that's the individual vars that have been transposed, and it's this piece right here, multiplied by this column vector that I've already uh, produced, and I get what's inside the square root, which in this case corresponds to our portfolio variance. And then I take a square root of it, and that gets me the value at risk or and specifically the diversified value at risk so the virtue of this is that we've incorporated the correlations and I can just note that my diversified value at risk 257 is lower than what I got before when we did an undiversified value at risk which we consist simply of adding each of the positions. We got 263, so we got a lower value at risk, a diversified VAR, and again, it's the it's this function here, the product, which includes first the product of the correlation matrix and the individual the vector of individual VARs, and then we take that product, which is a column vector and multiply it or pre-multiply it by the transposed individual vars. So that's an illustration of the uh, table 11 for in Jorian that gives us the diversified var of the bond portfolio. This is David Harper, The Bionic Turtle. Thanks for your time. <music>